Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome, and thank you all so much for joining us here today uh, to celebrate Omnidon Publishing and the launch of all of their new spring titles. Um, uh, we are uh, always in for a treat when we're celebrating Omnidon. I'm realizing I don't need my, uh, my headphones to, to hear myself talk. Um, welcome, everybody. My name is Evan Karp. I'm the events manager for Booksmith. We're a mainstay of the hate, San Francisco's Hate Ashbury district since 1976 as an independent bookstore. Um, thank you all so much for being here. And uh, congratulations, Stephen, Mary, Sylvain, Cynthia, Brandon, Stephen, and Martha. Um, welcome and congratulations to all of you and your new books. Um, uh, without further ado, I'm so excited to introduce Steven Seidenberg. His other works include Plain, uh, Plain Sight, C2, Null Set, and Itch. He's also the author of the photo monographs Pipe Vale, Berlin, and the Architecture of Silence, Abandoned Lives of the Italian South. And we're celebrating Anon today. Um, Y'all give it up for Steven. Thank you, Evan. Thank you, Booksmith and Rusty. And Congratulations to everybody on the new books. Um, Anon is a kind of continuous narrative of sorts, poetic narrative, and I will just start at the beginning and read for about 10 minutes. All the same, I thought myself a less likely pauper than corpse, and approaching both with neither speed nor trepidation, dreamed the dreary languor of this medial repose, a passage to the nearest port, where I might yet be freed of the compulsion to believe myself conscripted to the screed of fixed horizons. It is my way to grieve what once was mine, to beat perforce another path, when loosed from all the self-effacing credos of a fool, I can again, if not at last, exude the fetid humor of this incidental gash, a glancing wound that ever bleeds from nowhere towards the real. When I promenade in lockstep with each funeral procession I encounter on my way, and find in every prized and praising eulogy the giddy stimulation of solicitous reproach. When every faint distortion seems a respite from the swooning obligations of a tortured light, and no other can declaim a greater purpose than this shrift, lacking in composure the enchantment of utterance or caress, I croon the sonant gospel of extinction with a forced, anomic smile to flow again as water spilled and gathered to the sea. When I warble it to pigeons preening on the trail and think myself the fairest of all murderous successions long since driven from the drink, when I press to play the vaudeville guignol on that pretense of a stage and dig a shelter for a grave in quiet, painfully delectable anticipation, pleading in recumbency for the cleansing inundation only such an incidental surfeit can complete. When the terra set beneath me seems no more reliable a perch than any melting iceberg drifting low upon the waves, and each new leap towards solid ground settles as another nervous wobble lurching sideways after plumb, then I account it high time to set out upon that most inscrutable of atmospheric lineaments, shimmering and distilled, making for the coast with as much haste as possible. If they but knew it, almost every suppliant would seek the same unalterable limits, off to sail the seamless grade upon which every tangent, every pivot. So call me what you will. Some time ago, never mind how long, having emptied out my pockets to reflect the void of interest I had once again presumed to limb my enterprise on land. I thought that I would hitch my line to some haphazard freighter, indiscriminate in choice of mate or ancillary crew, and survey some small portion of the remnants of the deluge, as though to take a measure of the failure of that carnage to achieve its due. Call me foundling or free, a penance too depraved to offer, neither lineage nor birthright to repudiate or claim. 
This first flounce of acquaintance will not prove an easy target, and as such I implore you to stay with me through the transit, guaranteed the pleasure of some forthcoming diversion in surrendering your easement to the runoff of this rancid rill. And just as other swindlers find the floodgates of the wonder world swung wide by the controlled conceits and undeliverable perils of some derogating code, so the prudent zeal of this crude penury of forms compels me to find entrance to a loftier derangement, following the course of any pathway through the thorns of lavish copse and threadbare thicket to a dreamed apotheosis, a faint assured as well as witnessed in a speechifying plunder of the harbor, then the rhyme. Is it so surprising really that those whose flesh is rent in twain by such abiding paragon of superfluent longings, whose elemental character has been avulsed asunder by the discharge of this otherwise gratuitous prognosis, should want to cast a glance upon the land they've left behind without a seeming trace? Have they overstepped all limits by their need to cleave the depthless whirl of poesy to their forswearing heels, that they might comprehend at least their least and own most stranding of such mat and leaden pearls for sodden souvenirs of searches ended in a prepossessing vagrancy? They, 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 if any third now feigns a deft presentiment of footfalls still secluded from this pallid churn of figments into prosody, where the credulous dissemblance of some middle term insists its functionary compass points assume a Stygian transparency and equivalence of privations as means to reach the beachfront from which every furtive mariner sets forth. Then what, or rather, who am I to ferret out the regress thus mistaken for a torrent, to bar the jest before I found the means to its dis discernment as a game of tag where the only home is a tree stump on the far side of the ocean? Why not let that leaky tub float cautiously away from its phlegmatic harborage? image after after image, cruising vainly timewards in the name of some shrewd prowl. The pitying land would deign give succor, but in the gale that clot of rotted modicums presents an unmatched peril. With one small graze, the polished keel has scattered into timbers, and all the crew compelled to trade the vigor of the shallows for a shroud of sodden loam. Thus ye glimpse the mortally intolerable measure of a reasoned meditation, where every effort issues from the bucket mind's desire to keep itself afloat upon an independent main, against the overweening press of transcendental muck to cast that dinghy back upon the ravaged shore. But as in dispossession from the land resides the highest truth, indefinite as any godly spasm from the null. So better to vanish in the storm surge of that ululating squall than to beat one's head upon the cudgel of the lee, vergeless but approaching the next verge of some unbounded shoal. Still the rumpled wavelets will rise up to taunt the plunderers of flotsam with the promise of a pitch that can't be measured or inclined, that can't be, whose amusements, as it were, may well be warrantless in turn. But no facile reproof can lay such claim to an attention more compelling or inclusive, driven as a dancer who can't finish off a single pirouette without a blunder, so bent on its refinement that there's no chance to rebalance before the stumbling plie. So it goes with me when my world is laid bare by the hunger to fall headlong from the crow's nest in despair, to throw myself into the maw that guarantees the scant estate of indisputability its ken. The sundering of depth from any surfacing facade, the shearing of the veil that rends the integral abyss, 
No evidence will abrogate the next arising outside without another surging forth to take its form and place, resigned to make my mark by skipping over once again, to draw my breath in viscous troughs hewn from the seesaw heaves, knowing that to sink would but enact another deficit, another loss. Thus, when I am once again and thoroughly repulsed by the repair of carking ditches in the desiccated marl, I take the limpid lacquer of the deep to be an image of the bottomless entelechy that permeates each shining thrum perceivable in kind. There I have departed from the fickle thick of gore and skin diffusing through the dissonance with every lapping wave of muddled skyline on the slopes of the new day, a freedom from all frittering defilements occasioned by my efforts to make tangible the topographic contours of the shore from which all similarly decorous prostrations must have already embarked. Each world is an island, accomplishing its shadowy remainder by accepting on the balance the discretion, the necessity, for necessity is never indiscreet, of a monstrous decay into its other. The flesh is sad, alas, and I have nothing but words. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen, um, and thank you all. Uh, Next up, we have Mary G. Wilson. Uh, Mary's the author of the chapbook, Not Yet. Her poetry has appeared in Coconut, Anomalous, Typo, Paper Bag, The Scores, Elderly, and Elsewhere. She holds an MFA from Brown University and recently completed a PhD in English at the University of California, Berkeley. Today, we are celebrating both Apollo, which you can order just beneath the video by clicking through. Make some noise for Mary, guys. Thank you. Thanks, Evan. And thank you to Rusty for bringing all these books into the world. Um, in this difficult time and congratulations to everyone. Um, I am going to read uh, from my chat book. The first poem I'm going to read is called Resume, but it might also be called Resume. Resume. Once I met a wild boar. She was a rescue. I mean, she is, her name is Fancy. I wonder if anyone will ever say my name in a poem. The only God I worship is the one that makes the future tense conditional, like work experience. You have to have a job to get a job. It would be hard to work in. In Philadelphia, the ruin of the penitentiary offered more square feet per person and fewer years per foot than any current supermax industrial facility with language but experiment with telling tour groups that, and some of them will hate you, like you just put their shoes on backwards for them. Time expands some ways. You know which ones I mean. Like a haunted house is supposed to be filled with the ghosts of white bodies. Like, don't fuck this up for us. Let's have both. That was winter clicking into place. That was one queer passing as a boy child where the child part is mostly under thought. It's strange when by the rotary's confusion we eat our lunch, by the public song we get weirdly bored, though yesterday we had the most ecstatic pizza under trees, their white-throated rumor. It's always private, but this is just grammar for what we intuited, isn't it? Let's have both, part two. Between the goddess versions of Apollo and D, I am utterly lost. They pretend to be identical, which is seemly in women, identical with women, so of course I'm in love, but with whom? They each have a tell that they won't. It's what our hearts just added to the general fog material, always machinery, can't they shred those branches someplace else? I have eaten my vegetables and for what rule of threes, this glimpse of the hill facing east, an animal that won't go to sleep while in the west your impossible face. Hello, you've met my animal but not myself. 
Holderlin had a word that meant both war, which is order, and chaos, which is party. This speech rarely says no, like I do, doesn't it? And out on the horizon, the ocean is pool colored, unused to being compared with other than itself. Like when you accidentally engender competition by doing stuff, the fallout is almost a praise poem. And his beard was frosted with the coldness of years, and thus he spake. Your wordplay kindles joy in me, the years abroad seeking anecdotes. I always say no at the wrong time, since being for is not like being with, without, with all. Our nature excludes the reasonable feel, his region, reason the rage involved in speeding towards a red light who is God of wine and parties. It's an old conflict. Why would we catapult reason from the sidewalk if we didn't want to break it accidentally on the hood of someone's car and so come to its parts? When you can't frustrate the logic you started with or tell a green dress from a great gymnast or wind from the normal shadows we grew up with from the bridge where the wind comes in in spite of geometries over us and calling out the assholes, including their works, and need something to write most vigorously these days for other people. This is why our daily isn't, but could be defined in the box that's an ocean or stayed in the dark, but lovingly gazed on a file that writes without stopping, a sparrow running on its little legs I think it's a sparrow. I think those are legs who declined the wind in their career early on because it was myth. When in doubt and emerging sharply into perspective or streaking from one extreme to the other in their oh so serious golden carriage. This poem is called Last Lyric Donut. I won't bite you about this opinion that it goes badly with us professionally. I'm basically a bacheloler or like a moment known as a holiday for kids. I can't remember what that feels like. I mean, I can, but it's not like anything enough anymore. Each pink dawn diving into the hollow of this donut, my doubt. It's basically the O between eating and being awake. This poem is called Manifesto, but it isn't one. Manifesto. There's a saying that this battle evokes procedure and the glass it metaphored and the much we didn't make of it, not while partying to follow the procedures of the violent and make a cage of this saying that isn't one. I carried your name like a huge shield, a bull for the apology I turned it over and expressed my disappointment with the soup, which was gross. The shield sat hold side down and vacant, liquid seeking out the table's rim. It was the avant-garde, was green, almost alive as a weapon. I apologized for the metaphor, and I do. I'm still hungry. Is there a word for that? And I forgot to keep a track of time, but I think I'm gonna read just one more. This poem is called Grain. One. Former dearest, I am easy to trap and to explode. Doves collect the splinters, eagles the doves, photographs the eagles, and the wind hover works hard in a small way to stay just where it's vibrating, a twitch in the wing, you know, stirred up. The butterflies are pornographic. I dare not look at my phone. And the sun is a violence today, isn't it? The eclipse really almost not happening. Two. When the world was young, I offended you in a poem. In the East Coast summer of the tar fumes, having with the storm fast leaves, the hubris to think I could. And to measure my pulse, 
this weird contraption as if the DOI or FDA spelled us out in corn stalks holding hands with the other corn. That's how pastoral it got. The solar eclipse is less than 1% at these coordinates. I forget how it works. And we'll spend the day deciding, should I Google it later with the butterflies who are so much to be watched in aerial movement? We, I mean I, dare not check our phones, my phone. Thank you. Thank you, Mary, that was lovely. Um, uh, and uh, next up, we have Sylvain Gallet and Cynthia Ho. Um, Sylvain is a native French speaker, uh, which I'm not, so actually please forgive my pronunciations, um, but Sylvain is a native French speaker transplanted to the US 20 years ago. He's an emeritus professor of economics at Université Francois Rabelais and of French in the School of International Letters and Culture at Arizona State University. His co-authored book in economics is entitled France Encounters Globalization. And Cynthia Hogue's 10th poetry of uh, 10th collection of poetry, Instead It Is Dark, will be out uh, next year in 2023 with uh, Sylvain Gallet. She translated Fortino Samano, the overflowing of the poem from the French of Virginie Laluc and Jean-Luc Nancy, which won the Landon Translation Award from the Academy of American Poets, and Joan Dark by Natalie Quintan. Hogue's honors include two NEA fellowships and the Witter Benner Translation Fellowship. She is the inaugural Marshall Chair in Poetry and Emerita Professor of English at Arizona State University. And the book we're celebrating is Distantly. I'm happy to turn it over to Sylvain and Cynthia. Evan, thank you. Um, thanks to Rusty and Ken, who have been heroic, and Laura at Amidon. And thanks to Booksmith for organizing this reading. Um, I want to just give a little bit of context to distantly Wenten in French. Uh, Nicole Brossard is one of the most eminent um, Francophone writers in the world today. The poems in distantly are linked through the themes of life in cities. Every poem title begins with cities or uh, city. The series as a whole, a la Cristeva, Kristeva's Women's Time is based loosely on the observations, emotions, perceptions, and dreams of women. Taken together, the poems make up a series of evocative distillations of postmodern urban life with a sharp awareness of social, cultural, and gendered histories of violence and beauty. Okay. Ville avec le mort. Au loin, Prague, le pont, le château, l'heure dans l'horloge, l'horloge dans l'histoire, le cimetière juif au tournant. Skopje, Istanbul, autres alphabets, commerce d'or et d'épices comme rivière rouge, safran, du sang dans le temps. Cities with their name. In the distance, Prague, the bridge, the castle, the time on the clock tower the clock tower in history, the Jewish cemetery at the corner, Skopje, Istanbul, other alphabets, commerce of hours and spices like a river, red saffron pulsing with time. Ville, réellement. Villes avec leur vieille pile de malheur vacillant. Entre mémoire et marée d'emportement virtuel, tellement que noir et très gris de poussière et de cris font dans ma bouche une érosion de vie qui ne se partage pas. Cities, really. Cities with their old piles of misfortunes, vacillant between memory and tides of virtual passion. So much that black and very gray with dust and cries make in my mouth an erosion of life that can't be shared. Ville avec un visage. Tant d'idées reçues comme un gouffre dans mes muscles. Tout près, on dit que c'est toi, mais c'est nous, avec une pensée pour les ponts, les gâtes, les fleuves en temps de paix et de torture. Une caresse sur le lobe de l'oreille, 
ville faite pour nous embrouiller l'âme dans la beauté bleue du rêve. Cities with a face. So many received ideas like a chasm in my muscles. Up close, I say it's you, but it's us, thinking of bridges, gaps, rivers in times of peace and torture. A caress on the earlobe, cities made to confuse our souls in the blue beauty of dreams. Villes avec leur fou de Dieu. Cette fois-ci, je compte les mains, les pieds, les langues, les tuniques, les cailloux, les têtes, les barbes, les calottes, les voiles, les châles. Je ne compte pas les vertiges, les ablutions, les miracles, les coups de fouet. Dans les haut-parleurs, des dizaines de crachats de mots, un feu si grand qu'il faut de l'eau sur le front, les pieds. Je compte les yeux, les doigts, je compte jusqu'à la poussière, je compte jusqu'à l'enfance. Cities with their fools for God. This time, I count the hands, the feet, the tongues, the tunics, the pebbles, the heads, the beards, the skull caps, the veils, the scarves. I do not count the vertigos, the ablutions, the miracles, the whiplashes. In the loudspeaker, the dozens of spat out words, such a big fire that water must be splashed on brow, on feet. I count the eyes, the fingers. I count until the dust. I count until childhood. Ville réellement. Quand le froid taille dans les arbres de petites agglomérations de sens, si tu apprends à toucher facilement l'épaule de quelqu'un pour changer l'avenir, touche. Cities, really. When the cold carves in the trees small agglomerations of meaning, if you learn how to touch someone's shoulder easily, to change the future, touch. Villes avec un visage, parce qu'il vaut mieux soupirer au-delà de nos croyances, et plus loin la solitude encore. Voici que tu la déploies devant toi, comme quelqu'un qui veut toute la mer pour soi, son infaillible lumière d'emportement. Cities with a face, because it's better to sigh beyond beliefs and further still the solitude. Here you spread arms wide before you, like someone who wants the whole sea for herself, its infallible light of passion. <coughs> Bill sans nom. Bill, quand quelqu'un te bouscule, dit « soy sorrow » bah, à propos du bruit et de la pluie, s'empare à bras le corps d'une mélodie pour soulever le présent. Ton parfum fort de changement qui fascine tous les matins, quand même tu l'aimes, bras ballant l'humanité sans oxygène au milieu de ces débris rutilants. Cities without names. Cities when someone shoves you, says sorry, sorrow, because of the din and the rain, wraps arms around a melody to lift up the present. The strong perfume of change which fascinates you every morning. Anyway, you love humanity with helpless arms, without oxygen in the middle of its gleaming debris. Ville avec son nom. Un seul hurlement de néon, milliers de jetons et de passants, spectateurs de cirque et de hasard, écorchés vifs d'ardeur dans le désert, si beau, si rouge, Las Vegas, CD et tapis de Paris, sa tour Eiffel, ses gondoles, ce ciel de Venise, si bleu, si faux, pétale comestible déployé comme un envers de liberté, strip de futur, surveillante marchande. City with its name, a single neon howl, thousands of tokens and passers-by, spectators of circus and chance played alive by an ardor in the desert, so beautiful, so red, Las Vegas, its dice and bays of bets, its Eiffel Tower, its gondolas, this sky of Venice, so blue, so fake, 
edible petals spread like the reverse of liberty, strip of future, marketing, surveillance. <coughs> Ville avec beau visage qui revient. Vives avec espoir dans la mire des sanglots, pensons-nous que l'aube est un mot Ou avons-nous dit par erreur, tengo sueño Ce matin-là, dans une ville d'Amérique, sourire sève, au-delà de tous les calendriers, je respire lentement une vie de mots fresques, femme lovée dans une joie d'errance et d'infini. Cities where my face returns. Cities with hope in the crosshairs of sobs. Do we think that dawn is a word? Or have we said by accident, tengo sueño? This very morning in a city in America, to smile a sap beyond all schedules, I breathe slowly a life of frescoed words, women wrapped in the joy of wandering and infinity. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. That was lovely, Sylvain and Cynthia. Thank you both so much. Um, and next up, we have Brandon Griffin. Brandon was born in Massachusetts and now lives in Sunnyside, New York. He studied English at Harvard University and has an MFA from Columbia. He has written a chapbook called Four Concretures, and some of his poems have been published in Tag Work, uh, Chicago Review, and Word for Word. And Pastoral is his first full-length book, so make lots of noise in your homes, you guys. Um, happy to turn it over to Brandon. Uh, thanks, everyone. Thanks to Rusty and Ken and Laura at Omnidon and Evan at Booksmith. Uh, and congratulations to all the other readers. Lots of beautiful poems so far. Um, <clears throat> so a lot of the poems in, in Pastoral uh, use unusual spellings to construct non-human awarenesses. Uh, and it's kind of hard to capture these spellings as I read out loud, uh, but I'm going to try to give a sense of those weird spellings. When I read the spelling. I'm also going to set my timer. Uh, so this poem's about a sewage treatment plant. It's called Sewage Treatment Plant. Icy waste goes back out, back in, yes, it quiets down to soft swirl and local mind. So what carries on thinking? Hmm. Bowl stops clutching the water, pipe laxes, goes dances water that rushes outward under bloom birds on sky, roads pavement, wind shells on cars, let gone below all that in its own night ways to come and go. So what carries on thinking is rigorous hum, this guised trees that scrub with their glean, the cleaning puts on leaf fluffs on green gloves and those guys scrub the sky blue, suck cess pools in the green upleafing that scrub scurs scours the sky but think, thinking it's, thinking hmm, under plum tomatoes, red plump atoms. As soon I try to think it, it quiets down to unlit basin, no thinking. In writing, how many drafts chewed, cutted down below in back of the book where you don't, you can't look, has no back of the back, of course, I can speak straight, and then we'll get somewhere. But the other places, the passage voids from itself, from the linear landscape, get dumped. Rounds off the world to drainage sloths, sewaging, swinging, gangling, sage gnawing to the whole world, where world. Frost with air, work gets done eat the eaten beyond edible. What is not edible, we link ourselves to that, can eat again, eating, eating, eat back into eating how it works up the cycle, nodding streams. Flowers, flocks, 
of my gut files away. I file thou down through end of world, where world ends. Meet past that in sounds of night sealed away, past ends of nubbly light in grunt water, tubes sealed. Making writing isn't composing, it's decomposition, deposition it compost. My flowers plucked, pharmaceuticals plucked, pharmacological, farm ecology, in my phosphorus flow, my flower rivers. I have to go out and meet a representative of the species from the other end, not a species. I am not a that digests us from the pipe from the pipe we play it into. So really, laundry mouthwater swishing through my teeth strainers is everything. Undifferentiated after this apocalypse daily, every invisible second lining you, then zipping out, proliferating down the pipes of the end, the beginning, a swarm that also remains activated sludge. Circle has to be a circle eventually. Even stolually has to go back out, come back in if I'm to be here, lining it, lining the circle. Clerical is river shaped if river is a circle, if S is O. This guts a bag, pipe, horn, bellows, bells all the way, flush against the end to study it first, then think it real time, while in background, more studying, deep gurgling, study of its back that studies its belly, palpitates ground level water. Splash of thinking is real time. Scholar in past old ways. A looping river. Eating is cleaning is, but we don't call it that. We clean only ourselves, our, our, do. We clean the cleaners, clean down to the bare crate Adams came in. Eat the package of the world we unwrapped yesterday is today. Crinkling up time its stringy glint of waste, water coiling. Okay, I'm just going to read one more poem. Uh, it's about a fly, and it's called A Fly Flies, But It Also Hops. Flying is listening. Listen close to your skin. Farther off, it will lift you. My stomach of hairs or legs and empty a back made of noise and a loft. Now then, it catches. Then it hops. Uncertain, but certainly I'm a tip in your swatting, and here over here I'm a tip. Speck a nothing of soil and trapped, yes, trapped. A finger and ear of the soil to press on the fuzz, this hollow, this room. Pause. It inspects. It is a public thing. To fly is described in this forum, its echoes, its hollows. Is tap on the light, the light has rotted, has hardened. Is tap out the news of the light, its noises what follows. It is brittle, bristly, and certainly foul. Earth is my food, is me the meat of the earth, thank you. You spoil this food, so now I eat it, you do, where are you? And how, and taking the dark of the insides you ate them, you did, where are you? It buzzed on, it picked its infinitesimals. With dust-sized legs, it twitched its ground. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Brandon. That was really fun. Congratulations on Impastoral. Um, uh, next up, we have uh, Stephen Rude. Stephen was born in Los Angeles, uh, attended Hollywood High School and UC Berkeley, and is a practicing trial lawyer. He studied classical guitar for decades. For 15 years, he was a friend and poetry student of the great Jack Gilbert until Jack's death. An um, earlier iteration of Stephen Rude's manuscript was a 2019 National Poetry Series finalist. 
His poems appear in Periodicities, Sporklet, Quarterly West, Marin Poetry Center Anthology, Fugue, Lyric, Hayden's Fairy Review, Can You Hear the Birds Chirping With Me, um, Tar River Poetry, New Letters, the Marlboro Review, The Atlanta Review, The Southern Poetry Review, Notre Dame Review, and elsewhere. He lives in Berkeley with his spouse, the poet and Jewish feminist liturgist, Marcia Falk. Their son, Abraham, teaches high school English in Oakland to newly arrived immigrants from Mexico and Central America. And um, we're celebrating Naming the Wind today. Y'all um, show some love in the chat for Stephen Rood. Thank you, Evan. Am I on? Whoop, hello. You're on. Uh, I, I don't see myself, but am I there? Have I disappeared? We can see you. Oh, good. All right. Well, I don't see myself, which is even better. Um, I want to thank you, Evan, for being an excellent host. Um, and I also want to thank uh, and mention Rusty Morrison, Ken Keegan, who, for the dying art of poetry, are the greatest publishers that I've ever encountered. For an author, and I'm sure this is true for all of us who are here today. For an author, Omnidon is the finest press you could ever dream of being published by. Um, and I also want to mention at Omnidon, Laura Joachimson and Rob Hendricks, who have been uh, just lovely in, um, in helping these books come to reality and bring them into your hands. Um, I'm also delighted to discover the poets who are reading today. This is an, a kind of an interesting opportunity for us to actually have uh, meet new, new writers that we haven't known before and begin to open them up. This whole experience is like a Forspeist, which is Yiddish for uh, appetizer courses. Uh, we're, 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 we're getting tiny bits of, of each other's poetry, and I hope that that um, brings others into, into uh, into reading the books. This is a book, Naming the Wind. First poem, By the Rivers of Babylon. I fell, hitting a greenstone boulder hard, tearing my elbow skin. The blood dried quickly in the heat, forming a small rust dome. I walked through orange air, its taste taught me the mean, one meaning of orange. I kept looking down so I wouldn't trip again, missing whatever was the new beauty above me in the smoke. Stopped to drink, rest, nauseated. I tried concentrating on my breathing, reached a certain manzanita I'd known for 30 years, muscled trunk, brick red, made redder by the red sun. Then I feel fists beating on the outside of my skull. I fight off the fists. At first, I don't see the boy attached to the fists. When I do, he breaks through, beating me harder and crying. Is it for the trees combusting in the north? For us, both of us? For the squadron of 21 turkeys overtaken by firestorm? A turkey feather here, another and then all of them, ash. Before I know I've let him, he crawls onto my chest, arms around me. I bring my cheek to his hair, sit with, with my weight on his, with his weight on my lap. His weight about the same as my son's when he was six. Conversation after the ballet. 27 bones of hand, three of arm, 26 of foot, chains of small bones, the remaining 94, a vast flexuous musculature holding them, all impelled into flight, music and the body. The job least likely to replace by artificial intelligence is principal dancer with the Canadian ballet. Nothing except the actual body is a body. The dancer is saying that a, compo that a computer program learned how Beethoven was Beethoven. Maybe I say. 
But can AI match a couple hidden in Temescal Canyon, moving smoothly under willows, circled by a hawk? No, she agrees. Can AI speak in the language of spring on the mountain? No algorithm can prove a ripe gooseberry, a whispering flax, sun detonated lilies. Odors, qualities of light, rhythms now hidden beneath memory, emerging from stiffness as one finds grace in an arm, matchless singularities. We look so small at table. Self-portrait with a cod's head. The man looks at himself from above and at an angle, sees an old man, too old to be bothered by admirers or haters who know nothing about a cosmos within. The man puts the horrible head on a white plate, fork and spoon in his hands, ready. Cheeks, brain, collar, bones. The cod's eyes look out, seeing more than the man will ever see. The man eats oily flesh, delicious. There came a wind. An eighth inch below the grass is blackness for 8,000 miles. On the planet's surface are squirrels, finches, crows, dogs, dog walkers, the parts of trees that sway. The upper world is busy with animal and human politics. The underworld is busy with moles chewing and digging through the lawn, who, via their small tunnels, allow me to get on my hands and knees and gaze into the earth. We all ride lightly on vast lakes of liquid nickel and iron. I remember my first Cretan melon, its weight and rough skin, the heat of the island, a faint odor that smelled nothing like bread, tomato, cucumber, onion. The cut of the woman's knife exposing pale green flesh, cavity and seeds, a vegetal geode, juice dripping, a single melon's interior that had never before been seen or relished. Getting there. The worm, and I'll read one more after the worm. The worm, the worm eats dirt and fungi, his humble provender. The worm's father teaches him that he is a born worm who must blindly serve his worm progenitors and be bait. The worm's segments and long muscles enable him to push through soil. He has no voice. He shares this silence with all worms. Mm -hmm. And these fates, sliced by shovel, drowned in rain, plucked by robin, squished under boot. It's eat, tunnel, undulate, shit. Lucky, he muses. Today, the worm is eating along in loam, under camellias, from nowhere to nowhere. He tastes a flake of gold, then a nugget of raw gold. Nothing had ever tasted like that. He still cannot be heard, but he is singing gold to himself. All right, last poem. Late winter. The afternoon sun is 100 million lumens of radiant flux igniting the pine trees in my retinas. Green gem 
Mosses are 3,000 lumens, patting the gray whack and schist. Drooping heads of toothworts are 200 milk white lumens, clusters of light amid thick buckbrush. Between 80 and 300 lumens emanate from various glowing odorous mushrooms bulging through oak duff. 900 lumens is this human face reflecting the mountain's lesser and greater lights. 50 lumens radiate the rufous-sided tohi I bend to see scratching under a leafless bush. One fortieth of a foot candle is a single firefly emerging from the windy pines. 80 million lumens sizzle in the coruscating creek. 8,000 lumens are the hop tree's newborn triplet leaves, one of which I pinch to smell what the sun has been doing. Beneath the mud, not one packet or wave of light. My feet slip on that darkness. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen. That was wonderful. Um, that was Stephen Root, everybody. Um, and next up, um, last but certainly not least, we have Martha Ronk. Uh, Martha is the author of 12 books of poetry and one of short stories called Glass Grapes. Her poetry books include Silences, Ocular Proof, Transfer of Qualities, which was long listed for the National Book Award, Vertigo, a National Poetry Series Selection, Partially Kept in a Landscape of Having to Repeat, Eye Trouble, and Why, Why Not. Her work has been included in the anthologies Lyric Postmodernisms, American Hybrid, Not for Mothers Only, and most recently North American Women Poets in the 21st Century. She worked as editor for Literal Books and the New Review of Literature and is the Emeritus Irma and J. Price Professor of English at Occidental College in Los, Los Angeles, where she taught Renaissance literature and creative writing. And we are celebrating um, and, and hopefully ordering the place one is today. Everyone make some noise for Martha in the chat. As everyone else has done, I would very much like to thank Omnidon. Um, Obviously, um, I have uh, been a loyal fan and very grateful to Omnidon for many, many years. Um, and uh, thank you so much to Booksmith, um, which has had so many wonderful events over the last few years. Um, the book that I'm going to read from, The Place One Is, begins with a quotation. Um, and it's, a place is a piece of the whole environment that has been claimed by feelings. And it's from A Sense of Place, The Artist and the American Land by Gussoff. Um, place in this book uh, refers mostly to places that I know that are in California, but also um, the place one is in one's life um, and how those two things um, interact, intermingle, depend on one another. The first poem, so I'm just reading from the beginning of the book. This is called To Let Go. Imprecise morning, as if limbs were only loosely threaded in the coming and going of tides. In flattened grazing land, extending into beach sand, going on until far out of view the imprint of a foot, then another, the time it takes for a seeded oyster basket to mature. I think of visiting the morning while I'm at it, keep saying I am here and she writes back from the other coast, we will die where we are, here or there, hours once rung by bells, she tells me we need to give over to place time, Hours once rung by bells. She tells me we need to listen to the beaches with bleaching logs, so many of them, as if she were telling me something else. I can never not think it means something hidden from view and wonder then if every detail, even if distance blurs it, opens to the beating of wings going off over the flatland and disappearing into migratory patterns 
as if in the near future, all objects would simply let go all intensity. Another country. The it in with it shifts and pivots as a compass needle, vetch, clover, brackish seaweed in heaped up smells, bits of pulverized shells, skeletal casings underfoot, fog banks stoked by fires in the central valley, scrims cover what yesterday should stood as branched trees, a house barely visible, more memory than memory, unheimlich as if and as if it had been or could have been. You whom I turn to in near sleep, stumbling over ourselves, whose arms and legs was it I thought you called extracting the changed angle between two norths. A skeleton of rusted car seams laid out on the beach. Each step unlinked from the one before. Each detachable makes up this country I'm pointed into. Um, here in Southern California, we're obviously suffering from a lot of drought. When I visit my sister up north, um, they get worried about the way in which the ocean waters are rising. This is called into rising waters. Under the various moons, various translations thereof, so many vacant lots, matia poppies, trash and abandonment, thistles, rusty blackberries, coyote brush, tires, see-through pale flax, clumps of fog heave back and forth as if they were mammalian labial creatures pulsing earthward and then into cloud-shorn skies. Each iteration a different tidal moon torn into papery scraps. Refracted light burns my eyes. A cramped muscle turns the street lamp blue. Under the rubbery step, the gravel gives way. Restless wheat stalks akin to what muttering is like under her breath in another room talking to herself, thin and high pitched, underpinning whole fields of words. A lens of fresh water floats on the heavier salt water under that. If you push the weeds, a marker stands where the winter tide was high. Rising seawater will swamp a nearby town, the bridge, the Mad River Slough, the low-lying field where the cows lie and stand, the graffiti-covered barn. And this has a phrase in it, um, which is a Native American uh, phrase, which means tree hair. Malel Trail, Arcata, California. There are no trees on the beach. It goes on and the water's so cold, no one swims. And on Malel, the trees are being swamped by giant dunes migrating over them as wind blows grains of sand into the air. And they hang there until they're over the top and falling on ragged limbs and ragged tree hair. Itla okla, smothering the tree until each tree kneels into the sand and over the years, the slump of the dunes alters the landscape. The movingness of the world is right with us on this trail, moving country into country, one history, wiping out another, upending a familiar world, shifting and moving over cities, lives, shoulders too weighted down to think with. No matter how little or much one knows, Shifting sand moves over trees, fills up ponds and lagoons, 
chokes a night with images of future migrations extending into where we are walking. Night, a photograph by Robert Adams. Ordinary bits of light on neighborhood leaves, trees passed by, splattered not very white on a random number of them. The canopy of leaves wide enough to hold multiple bits of light. And what I can't help is how pulled I am into the lights as if my eyes could focus on multiple places at once, which I know they can't. And yet my body, flattened and splayed, spreads itself over the leaves and the branch never lowers or moves, simply stays as it is, as I am pulled from each limb and finger, head and elbow onto the tree, as if I could just lie there elongating out to the extreme endpoints, not in my neighborhood, but in his Longmont neighborhood, 1976, when at that time I was nowhere near. And yet online allows me to move entirely into a night and lights scattered, I suppose, from an ordinary street lamp on the sidewalk and the tree branches. And it must be summer given so many leaves. And um, I'm gonna conclude with another poem that refers to Robert Adams. Um, and it's a series of poems that um, try to enact the way in which we become one with the place where we are. So this is called Where One Is. The place one is, is the place that is one, nowhere else. And although I can think myself back into some places where one is the only place and everyone's feet change underfoot as wet, sand, concrete, pebbles, and smooth, operate as adjustments, or the particular tree out the window, one branch hanging down. Oh, Robert Adams, I do think of your black and white photos, but it's a cypress hanging down outside the window and sending out fingers of that certain green, not the gray you do so well, since one can't be otherwise than an equation of such enormously specific greens and one cannot be otherwise than where one is knit into it beyond window glass, a fusion with a wind-shaped tree. Thank you, and thank all of the readers. I've had a wonderful afternoon. Thank you. Thank you, Martha. That was absolutely lovely. What a, what a great way to, um, to conclude our, our day, and I'll, I'll, um, I'll invite all of the authors to, to turn your videos back on so, so that everybody can... Um, can uh, can give you all a round of applause from from home here. I'm gonna I'm gonna put us in gallery. Um, thank you all so much uh, for your readings. What a great uh, afternoon! And I I you know uh, woke up smiling because I knew it was gonna be great. It always is with Amidon's readings. Um, I'd love to to um, to bring Rusty up. Um, also, I'm gonna I'm gonna do that here if I can. Let's see. Um, you know. Um, <laughs> Uh, I can only ask to start your video, Rusty. Um, so uh, I'm I'm sending you that request. Ah, oh, there you are. Um, congratulations okay. to all the authors. Thank you, and um, and and Rusty. Um, it's so good to see you today. So I'll just say a, a little bit, if I may. Am I am I hearable? Um, so I should talk. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, first of all, I loved sort of tracking in the chat. Everything that people were saying to each other, just wonderful. Um, I'm so grateful to all of you for your kindness to me and to Ken and to mentioning the wonderful Laura Drock Thiemson and Rob Hendricks. Uh, Omnidon wouldn't be Omnidon if it weren't for each and every one of you, each and every one of our authors uh, are a rising dawn for us and those people with whom we work. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's an amazing gift to me that I can wake up each morning and say, I can do this work. 
for as long as I can. Here's today. Um, and I also loved, I just started to quote from, uh, as I was hearing you, not as well as I'd like, I'm a slow and messy typer, but I heard, I mean, so much language from each and every one of you that I just sort of have to type a little bit to kind of hear it through my hands. And I'm so grateful for that. And Evan, Oh my goddess, um, you are, there's no one like you in the Bay Area. And I know many of you know that, but it is true. He has been working tirelessly. Um, you are the picture of Dorian Gray, man, because you look exactly the same. How I've known you more than 15 years and you yeah, are true. magical. <laughs> it's true from here. And, and endlessly working f on the behalf of literature and language. And Booksmith has been a joy and a marvel and these Zooms that you give us and do for us. And so um, there's, there's no one like Evan and nothing like Booksmith. Um, I, and I wanted to say a word about all of the books that these books, the place one is, uh, well, I'll do it in alpha order. At, and on both Apollo, um, distantly, uh, um, mm, I'm lost. Naming the wind, the place one is. I think I got all of them. Um, they are, in each in their own unique ways, questioning, both in form and content, because each of them use form in very different ways. Some more subtly than others, but all of their work is alive and intricately mixed between form and content to really press the prevailing limits of knowing. Uh, when you look at the work on the page, you feel that most fully, but they are excellent readers and you can hear it in their voices as they pause, as they pull, as they tease. And that is form functioning to make meaning happen. Um, Valerie says, it is the meeting of sound and sense that makes poetry. And you find it in each of their works. Um, and they are, they are, each of them, in their very own unique ways, exploring both internal and external boundaries of risk. Um, it is an honor to, uh, for Ken and I and Omnidon and Laura and Rob to be their publishers. May you come back and be with us and uh, we're just incredibly grateful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Rusty. So so good to hear from you. And um, yeah, just um, if everybody uh, tuned in. Thank you for being here with us today. If you don't have the books, uh, click through and get them, um, or get them direct from On the Dawn, or just make sure you get the books if you have. Um, another uh, neighborhood bookstore. It's okay. You don't have to order across the country or around the world. However, if you are around the world and you're like, I wonder if Booksmith will, will ship this book to me across the world. The answer is yes, we'll ship anywhere. So, um, And we so much want to support Booksmith and independent um, bookstores. Really, really, really want to support them. So if you buy from Booksmith, you will have our love and adoration. So please do. Uh, Thank you, Rusty. Thank you all. Congratulations again to all of you authors. It's been a great day and um, take care. I hope to see you all soon. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Sei gesund. Sei gesund. <laughs> <laughs>